This is part four of how and why the government is corrupt. In my previous videos, we talked about from back in the 1700s to the 1800s, and we're now entering the 1900s and what took place to allow us to be in the position that we're in today. And finally, in 1913, private central bankers from Europe, in particular, you guessed it, the Rothschilds of Great Britain and the Warburgs of Germany, met with their American financial collaborators, met right here in Jekyll Island in Georgia. And here they conducted a secret meeting and conspired of forming a new banking cartel with the extensive purpose of forming a third bank of the United States. But this bank would have complete control of the United States money and place the United States citizens once again under the central bankers. But see, this time, these men didn't want no blowback they didn't want to have to keep doing what they had to do. So they formed what we now call the Federal Reserve. And they put that federal on there as Federal Reserve to give them a quasi-governmental appearance. But in fact, it's just a privately owned bank, just like the rest of them. And it is no more federal than the other company called the Federal Express. See, so skipping ahead, Bloomberg Media actually put out a lawsuit against the Federal Reserve in 2012 under the Freedom of Information Act, basically saying that they were not a government entity. But these men got power. That lawsuit didn't even go too far. See, the F Freedom of Information Act does not apply to the Federal Reserve. See, and in that year of 1913, it transformed the nation's economy forever. First, from the passage of the 16th Income Tax Amendment and the false claim that it's been ratified. And in the case Sullivan versus United States in 2003, this man right here, by the name of Judge James C. Fox, stated in quote, I think that if you were to go back and find and review the ratification of the 16th Amendment, which was in the, their internal revenue, the income tax, I think that you would find and examine that carefully, you will find a, that, a, that a sufficient number of states never ratified that amendment. Because see, later in the year 1913, they didn't want to risk any other person coming up talking about an amendment being ratified. So the Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act. Yep, the Congress was infiltrated. And guess when they passed it? Right when everybody was celebrating their favorite holiday, Christmas. See, they passed it while other members of Congress that opposed this would be at home with their families. And while the Constitution explicitly grants Congress to authorize the public currency, it doesn't authorize it to delegate that authority to another party like the Federal Reserve. So it should have required a new amendment, but ultimately the corruption already was in the United States. Like and follow for part five.